three months ago I reviewed this MSI Mag X870 Tomahawk Wi-Fi motherboard which currently sells for £285 including VAT here in the UK. I gave it 8.5 out of 10, I like it a lot. And today I'm reviewing this MSI Mag B850 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi which sells for £240 here in the UK. And when we look at the two motherboards side by side, I imagine you can't tell them apart. For reference, it's the X870 on the left, the B850 on the right. It's crystal clear these boards have a huge amount in common. So why, you may wonder, the £45 difference in price. You may also wonder, why have I reviewed this months ago? and this only today. And the explanation for that is simple. At CES this year, AMD released budget B850 and B840 chipsets. So let's dig into the Mag B850 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi and play Spot the Difference. Let's look at the lineup of AMD chipsets that support AM5 processors, i.e. Zen 4 and Zen 5. And you have to remember the 600 series chipsets on the right are very similar to the 800 series chipsets on the left. So in total we have seven potential chipsets to support your new AMD processor. It's the X870E and X870 which were launched around the time of Zen 5. And you can see they are very similar. PCI Express support for both storage and for graphics. It says max USB is 40 gigabits per second. But in fact, every X870 and X870E motherboard comes with two USB 4 ports rated at 40 gigabits per second. You can overclock the memory and the processor. And the difference between the two chipsets, the X870 has 36 lanes of PCI Express. The X870E has 44 lanes of PCI Express. And then we come to the B850 and B840. B850 could be very similar to X870. PCI Express 5 for the graphics is optional. Maximum USB-C is 20 gigabits per second. And you have the same amount of PCI Express. B840 on the other hand is sure to be inferior. You can be fairly confident you'll have PCI Express Gen 4 for both storage and for graphics. Maximum USB is 10 gigabits per second. You can't overclock the processor and you get a very slightly reduced number of lanes of PCI Express. And here we see MSI's stack of products that use these two new chipsets. And this covers a range of possibilities. So for example, the B840 Gaming, forget the spelling mistake, plus Wi-Fi, has a six layer PCB, seven phase power, and a very basic layout. However, you do get two and a half gigabit LAN and you get Wi-Fi 7. It's a similar story with the Pro B840P Wi-Fi, but then you move to the B850 chipset boards from MSI and the quality takes a distinct uptick. The Pro B850P Wi-Fi has a six layer PCB and 12 phase power for the VRMs. You have five gigabit ethernet and you have Wi-Fi 7. The MPG B850 Edge Ti Wi-Fi, eight layer PCB, 14 by 80 amp VRMs, five gigabit LAN and Wi-Fi 7. And it's a similar story with this Mag B850 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi, 8 layer PCB, 14 by 80 amps for the VRMs, 5 gigabit Ethernet and Wi-Fi 7. And with that information under our belt, let's take a look at the difference between the two Tomahawks, the X870 and the B850. One difference is that you get a debug display on the X870 and not on the B850. And when we turn to the rear I.O. panel, we can see the other changes. On the X870, two of the three USB-Cs are 40 gigabits per second, where on the B850, all three are 10 gigabits per second. According to AMD's spec for the chip, set two of these ports could have been 20 gigabits per second but they're all 10 gigabits per second the other difference is the blue usb type a is rated at 5 gigabits per second on the x870 there were three of them on the b850 just the one that's the theory and now let's look at the practice we take our open bench table test stand yes supplied by msi with a seasonic focus gx 1000 power supply atx 3.1 and we take our motherboard, we have a Ryzen 7 9800X 3D processor installed, along with 32 gigabytes of Trident Z5 Neo RGB memory, rated at DDR5 6000. We have a Gen 5 SSD, it's a crucial 
T700 and we pop off the heatsink. We install the SSD. Notice no tools required, just uses clever little catches. We install the heatsink and we're done. All those features that make it easy to build a PC with X870, we now get with B850. Apply my deep cool thermal paste guard, hook up the power. I don't need the extra power, the ATX 3.1 side of things, as I'm using a Ryzen 7 with an RTX 4090. But let's plug it in anyway, just so you can see how that works. Power, 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 thermal paste, Arctic MX6. Fantex Glacier 1 D30, so it's a 360 mm cooler with 30 mm fans, 30 mm thick, 120 mm in the diameter. Connect the pump of the AIO and one cable to hook up the daisy chained fans. And now our graphics card, which is an MSI RTX 4090 Ventus 3X. Ooh, I haven't got my graphics card support installed. And just to emphasize the easy build and dismantle features, I press the release latch. Out comes the graphics card. Budget motherboard, but you get all the features that you require. And we connect the power to the graphics card. And that's our PC ready to test. With the PC running, we take a look inside the BIOS setup screen and it looks like every other MSI BIOS we've seen in the past year or two. Everything's in its place, there are no obvious missing features, we leave everything on auto, set a fan curve, enable Expo on the DDR5 memory, and we head into Windows. And our first job is to run Cinebench 2024 and take a look at thermal performance. The ambient temperature today is only 20 Celsius, the processor draws a mere 115 watts, and it's no surprise to discover the thermals on this open test bench are absolutely icy cool. And then we can take a look at the performance charts. In this chart for Cinebench 2024 multi-core, there are four blue bars. These represent Ryzen 7 9800X 3D running on four different motherboards. And as you can see, the scores are incredibly similar, certainly within margin of error. And we declare that the MSI Mag X870 Tomahawk, Asus ROG Crosshair X870E, MSI Mag B850 Tomahawk, and MSI MPG X870E Carbon are in a dead heat, admittedly way down the chart. In Cinebench 2024 single core, the four motherboards do indeed have exactly the same score. This is what we expect. It also means the motherboard plays very little part in the equation in this benchmark. In Geekbench 6 multi-core, we see the four versions of Ryzen 7 9800X 3D basically tied, but there's a clear 100 points between the Mag B850 Tomahawk and the Mag X870 Tomahawk, surprisingly in favour of the B850. Power consumption. Here we can see some separation, and this indicates a difference in behaviour between these four motherboards. The Mag X870 Tomahawk uses a mere 110 watts. The B850 Tomahawk uses 115. The MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi uses 122 watts, and the Asus ROG Crosshair X870E Hero uses 126 watts. And we move on to gaming. Far Cry 6 at 1080p on Ultra Preset. There is a certain amount of separation between the four motherboards. You'll note the green bar that sits in the middle of the four blue bars is the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. In game tests, that processor effectively acts like a Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. 
When we look at the blue bars, we see the Mag B850 Tomahawk beats the Mag X870 Tomahawk by a handful of frames. In Far Cry 6 at 1440p, the Mag B850 Tomahawk wins by a small margin. It's worth pointing out we tested the B850 just the other day, where those other motherboards were tested over previous months. This could indicate a small change in the game itself, but whatever the explanation, the MSI Mag B850 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi is doing a good job. Moving on to Avatar Frontiers of Pandora at 1080p, top of the four blue bars we have the Asus ROG Crosshair, followed by the MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi, then the Mag X870 Tomahawk, and the Mag B850 Tomahawk in fourth place of those four. The separation between the four is small, but it is measurable. Something curious in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora at 1440p, the Asus ROG Crosshair, Mag X870 Tomahawk, and MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi are basically tied. However, the MSI Mag B850 Tomahawk essentially falls 10 FPS behind. In Assassin's Creed Mirage at 1080p, it's the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D at the top of the chart, and then the four versions of Ryzen 7 9800X 3D following close behind. And you'll note the MSI Mag B850 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi has a small lead over the other three motherboards. In Assassin's Creed Mirage at 1440p, it looks like we have quite a bit of separation between the different motherboards. We also have some Zen 4 3D processors leaping up the chart. However, if you look at the spread of FPS, at the top we have the MSI Mag B850 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi on 178 FPS on average, in a dead heat with the MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi. The two other blue bars are only a couple of FPS behind. Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p. Again, the four blue bars are quite close together. The Azus takes the win, and then the two Tomahawks fall a few FPS behind. It's curious to note that with the MSI MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi, the average is absolutely fine. The 1% lows do indeed look quite low. Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p. The four blue bars are very close together. While the averages are very similar, the MSI Mag B850 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi does very well on 1% lows. In essence, however, it's a dead heat. Total Warfarer at 1080p. Top of the chart, we have the MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi. Close behind that is the Asus ROG Crosshair. Then we have the B850 Tomahawk, and the B850 is a small distance ahead of the Mag X870 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. And we finish up with Total Warfare at 1440p. The four blue bars and the Ryzen 9 X 3D essentially tied. The curiosity here is that the Ryzen 9 has a very high 1% low, but the highest average FPS goes to the MSI Mag B850 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi. And we come to my conclusions about the MSI Mag B850 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi. And I'm going to confess, I'm still not certain where the Max comes into the equation. Let's call it the B850 Tomahawk, shall we? Pros, the good points. MSI's DIY features make life easy when you're building your PC or performing an upgrade. The fast Wi-Fi 7 and 5 gigabit Ethernet give you good connectivity. You've got loads of M.2 and SATA storage. It has a very solid VRM and the cooling is absolutely excellent. Cons, the negative points. The rear USB-C ports are 10 gigabits per second rather than 20 or 40, uh, which means in fact that the internal header that feeds the front panel USB-C on your case is actually the fastest at 20 gigabits per second. And the other point is, the same as with the X870 Tomahawk, is that the third PCI Express slot shares bandwidth with the fourth M.2 slot. I find that silly. Overall, and this is where it might get a little bit controversial, I'm giving this motherboard 9 out of 10 and a must-have. And here's my thinking. If you want a budget motherboard that supports your Zen 5 or Zen 4 processor and does a really good job, this is absolutely excellent. If on the other hand you want more features, my advice is move past the X870 Tomahawk, move all the way up 
to the MPGX870 Carbon Wi-Fi, which is a truly lovely motherboard, but priced over £400, it is expensive. This is not exactly budget, it's budget-ish, and I like it a very great deal. Remember to check us out on TikTok and with kitguru.net on the web.